Welcome back to this technical and today we are talking about skewed sex ratios. If you're a farmer, you've probably been in a position one spring where all you seem to be getting are offspring of a particular sex. And you can guarantee they're not the ones you want. If you want heifer calves, you're going to be getting bull calves. If you want tub lambs, you're going to be getting ewe lambs. Sometimes these weightings can be very significant and plenty of the farmers I've met have their own theories on this. Very often it's the sire, so the bull or the ram that's blamed. But is there any rhyme or reason to it? That is what I wanted to talk about today. And before we go any further, I need to give a shout out to the ladies at the AgriScience blog. I'm borrowing very very heavily from one of their posts in this one because it was written up so clearly and so well. They've got similar summaries for lots of other practical questions on the website. The link to that is in the description. I highly recommend you go and have a look. Anyway, they looked at a couple of different studies using the same data set from dairy cows in New Zealand. And those studies were looking for any plausible factor which appeared to skew the sex ratio either way towards bull calves or towards heifer calves. Of course, intuition tells us we should expect a 50-50 split between bulls and heifers. And the third factor, unsurprisingly, is random chance, right? So yes, we're expecting a 50-50 split, but not exactly and not every farm. So to illustrate this nicely, here is a hypothetical data set from a hypothetical 1,000 farms with 500 cows each. This is what we call a bell curve. So yes, for the vast majority of farms, they're going to be very, very close to that 50-50 split. But there are smaller numbers of farms which are going to have significantly higher number of bull calves and those which are going to have a significantly higher number of heifer calves. That is just chance. If you got a thousand people to flip a coin 500 times each, you'd find a very similar distribution. As you can see, the vast majority are going to have more than 216 heifers and fewer than 284 heifers. But there is still a small chance that a farm could fall outside these ranges. It's just chance, like I say. But although random chance is probably the biggest factor, there do appear to be other things at play. Even if we can't explain the mechanism fully, we can at least observe an effect. So number two, intriguingly, is the sex of the cow's previous calf. If a cow had a bull calf in the previous pregnancy, she was more likely to have a bull calf again. Like I said, the authors are just observing an effect here. As to what causes it, who knows? But it's certainly plausible that there are cow factors which make it more likely for individual calves to either conceive a bull calf or to carry a bull calf to term after conception over a heifer calf. Factor number three relates to the body condition score, how fit that cow is, and specifically the change in body condition score between the previous calving and the current conception. It was noted that cows with a high body condition score at the previous calving, which could then lose condition, were more likely to have a heifer calf than a bull calf. Why would this be the case? Again, we're not really trying to explain that effect here. We're just observing it. From an evolutionary standpoint, there is something called the Trivers-Willard hypothesis. It's certainly been documented in red deer, and it tells us that when times are hard, female mammals are more likely to have a female offspring versus when times are good, these female mammals are more likely to have a male offspring. The reasoning for that, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but basically relates to parental investment in offsprings of different sex. Very crudely from a farm vet's point of view, the way I understand it is when times are good, mothers invest differently in their offspring. So consider in a similar vein, how we manipulate the flushing of ewes, that is to essentially tell that used body times are good, increase your ovulation rate and have lots of lambs. Factor number four is the climate. So the authors looked at several different climatic factors and they averaged them in the week before conception for all of these calves. So here's a graph illustrating some of them. As you can see, there are several different factors noted here and they're expressing this in terms of an odds ratio. If you haven't come across odds ratios before, this is where we express the likelihood of something compared to a baseline. If I change some factor and the odds ratio is one, it's basically had no effect. If I change something and the odds ratio is two, that makes a given outcome twice as likely to happen. If I change something and an odds ratio is 0.5 or half, that makes this given outcome half as likely. Hopefully that's clear, but I'll put a link to more information on odds ratios in the video description. Back to the graph. 
graph, as you can see on the left hand side, it has an axis for odds ratio. And at the level of one, i.e. our baseline means basically no effect. We've got that dashed line. That's just to illustrate that odds ratio of one. And then for all of those different factors along the horizontal axis, we have a blue dot. That's the value assigned to it. But we also have these bars up and down. And those are the error bars. That basically means we can be pretty confident that the actual value sits somewhere within those error bars. So when we're looking for a significant effect, we want that blue dot and the entirety of the error bars to either be above or below that dashed line. And when we take that into account, we can see that maximum temperature, possibly minimum temperature and evaporation both have a significant, if modest, increase in odds ratios. So like I said, these effects are pretty modest, but we can also be pretty confident that they're true, they're real effects, they're not just smoke and mirrors generated by statistics. Not included in this graph is the level of rainfall because the authors didn't find anything interesting at all, basically. As to how the temperature and something to do with the evaporation affected the sex ratio, again, we're kind of stabbing in the dark, but there's some suggestion that might be correlated with grass growth. Remember, this is New Zealand cows. They're all conceiving in the spring when temperature might be a limiting factor on grass growth. The higher the temperature, the more grass growth, potentially a plane of rising nutrition, which seems to feed back to more bull calf. Remember, we're coming back to the Trivers-Willard hypothesis. When times are good, female mammals appear to be more likely to have male offspring. No grass growth was actually measured though, it's just an educated guess. And how about factors that didn't seem to have any effect? So that included the breed of cow, that included her lactation number, you know, was she a two-year-old, a three-year-old, four-year-old plus, and the year of conception. So it didn't seem like any particular year was correlated significantly with any particular sex ratio. Remember these data are for New Zealand dairy cattle, and so we can imagine they're going to be running under typical New Zealand dairy systems, block spring calving. They've got a certain type of genetic mix and so on. Whether these effects would hold true for beef cattle or all year round calving dairy herds, that remains to be seen. Nonetheless, I still found it really interesting, especially the Trivers-Willard hypothesis. And then of course we get onto the practical questions. Is there any meaningful way we could manipulate these to avoid an unfavorable sex ratio or to obtain a favorable one? And I think, the answer is probably no. We can't affect the weather, can't really affect uh, what the sex of the previous calf was unless we cull half our cows. We can manipulate nutrition, but clearly in dairy cows especially, there's going to be big knock-on effects of that, effects on conception overall, effects on milk yield during that critical spring period that are probably going to blow any minor sex ratio effect out of the water. Restricting nutrition in that conception period in an attempt to try and get more heifers is most likely going to have some pretty negative effects on conception rate in general, uh, the timing of conception and also other very important things like milk yield and so on. If you really want heifers and people generally want heifers over bulls, you are probably better off just feeding your cows to their requirements and investing some time and some expense in a decent sex semen program. And that's not without its pitfalls, so you need to talk to your vet if you're gonna go down that route. That's it for this week. If none of you guys found it interesting, I certainly found it interesting, so uh, there's a silver lining. If you wanna see more like this, let me know. If you don't wanna see more like this and you've got some other ideas for technicals, of course, let me know in the comments as well. If you did enjoy that, give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. It all makes a massive difference. It really does give me the motivation to keep churning these videos out. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'll see you for the next video.